the benefits to end-to-end -end autonomous driving is, is obvious. First is uh, the information exchange between the modules. For example, you, you still have the perception part and the prediction planning parts, but uh, they use the raw vector to exchange the information, not like a handcraft rule so tells you a uh, number of objects. So this gives you many possible scenarios. You can handle complex scenarios by using the end and the structures. It's just like a neural link between two modules. The second is, uh, it is learned from the video clips. The previous generation robotic system, you were defining what is good driving behavior. You told the, the cars, hey, these are cost function, this is good, this is not, right? So this, this is defined by, by humans. But uh, in, in this system, you just put the video clips, which is, you think is good. But this is very complex. You learn from the video clips. So that's, that's different. The Tesla is, uh, I tried their uh, version 12.3. It is feeling of human. So use this one so you have uh, more program space. Eventually, it is more human-like. It's offering better performance, better in, uh, experience, just like a human. Here, I will see uh, there are some limitations for current robotic system. So for, for example, the data infra. So the data infra for robots is different. It's not like your, 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 uh, for NLPs, you just download the text from the internet. This the text is, it is digital. But uh, the data you collect from the physical world is dirty and messy. So for example, you have time synchronization issue, you have calibration issue, some part of the sensors has a problem, you have a motion blur, what, all kind of things. You, you need to handle this. And also, the, the, you need a very balanced data set. And there are terminology used by a previous robotic system, so how many miles you drive. But I don't think this is an indicator uh, for your data set. Because you can drive in the same loop for one billion miles. It's not useful. The balanced data set is, is very important. And you need to handle millions of cars. For us, by end of this year, we, we, we should launch roughly maybe uh, 10,000 cars. I, I was thinking this is the beginning number if you, you go with this approach. Second, multimodality models. So everybody knows, so current autonomous driving uses BEV as a representation. But the BEV really are good representations? I don't think so. Why you need a BEV? Because back to three years or four years ago, so the decision on the planning parts, it is on uh, bird eye views. You use SL coordinator to do the planning decision parts. That's why the people need a BEV representation, because Back to that time, you need this kind of representation to make, make this work, make your planning decision works. And also for the BEV, so it compress the three-dimensional world to a 2D surface. This is a strong compress. You lose a lot of information. But it, it, I think it, it is work for cars because the cars drive, drive on surface. But for robots, no. These robots not operate in surface. For example, robots in your house, it handle complex three-dimensional world. But the thing is, so you do a BEV representation, you can see far, because you lose your dimensions. But if you, if you want to see precise in three-dimensional world, it's not a, BEV is not a good representation. But if you have a representation for three-dimensional world, the computation is expensive. But for humans, we see close, and we also see far. Right? For our robots, I don't think BEV is a good representation. It is only maybe only for cars, maybe f only f working for this object, robots move, moving on surface. That is uh, the, the issues. And uh, yeah, we, we are trying to f figure out this problem because once you go into the end-to-end system, why you need to uh, do this uh, on, a, on a BEV representation? This is not that necessary. Uh, the simulation is very important. It is save your data, save your money to, to c collecting data. Many of you already uh, say, uh, uh, very popular videos generated by Sora, it is uh, juice spinning videos, right? You will see the, the moment before spill and after, but the critical moment, the spinning moment is missing. This, this moment may be just one second, but it is very important for robots, for human perceptions. This critical state, not the state, state steady or stable states, is critical for your robots. Right, all these simulators, uh, Sora is a good one, very good one. It simulates a steady environment. So the water sim simulator needed to address this. Uh, currently, it has limitations, it only simulates steady states. That's why you do road test. That's why you need a million of cars. Only, only the real 
data collection, can, collecting data from the critical state. That's why we do mass productions.